so inside the previous lecture, we implemented a volatility targeting for the instrument and strategy level volatility targeting. So actually, let me um, take a look at um, let's just take this out. Um, let's load the data frame from the previous simulation that we did, and let's plot this. Um, and then we'll plot both, then we'll show, and then we'll close it. So we already showed that we hit our target volatility, but let's just um, visualize how that works. So we're just going to let that run, okay? But at the same time, while we let this run, we are going to discuss on profile level volatility targeting. So this means we go back to our iPad. So previously, what we did was to have instrument level full targeting, right? In full targeting. Well, what the instrument level targeting is is very simple. What it means is that we have a forecast of x of 1 and forecast of x of 2 for, um, say, Apple and Meta. But in this case, they have different levels of volatility. So how is it that we're going to reconcile the differences in the forecast as well as the differences in the risk and come up with position sizing for each of these individual positions? So we're looking at how to size these positions based on the target volatility of um, the portfolio. Based on the target volatility, we're looking at how to do that. Now, it is important to note okay, that when we do this, there is a loss of volatility. Now, for example, we allocate 50% volatility, 50 to Apple, and we implement, and we allocate 50% to Meta. So, and our target volatility was say X, was y, so we allocate y over 2 to this um, individual positions. But note that when we assign these target volatilities to each of these two positions, the overall volatility is actually going to be less than equals y. Now this is the concept of imperfect correlations. Now this is a very simple statistical concept, but when you take feral, let's these be two random variables, right, then um, this be a and b we may have a squared variance of x of 1 plus b squared variance of x of 2 plus 2ab covariance of x1 of x2. Well, if you don't know this formula, um, you don't have to pay too much attention to it. What it's saying is that, um, okay, let's just, let me just elaborate, okay? So our target volatility was um, to hit 20%. Okay, so so let's say we split, we do that by going um, variance of 1.5, x of 1 plus, I'm sorry, variance of half plus half of, variance, half of x of 2. This is going to be 1 over 4 variance of x1 plus 1 over 4 variance of x of 2 plus 2 1 quarter um, covariance of x of 1 x of 2. Our After we split, we're not going to hit the same target volatility y. This is the reason why we have to scale up our positions. So we have a stretch scaler so that each of our alpha 1, say this is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, all hits the same target volatility. So this is 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 .20, target vol. Right? So we will, let's say we assign 0 0.3 to each of these strategies. Right? So we're hoping that, um, so let this be the portfolio. So this is our portfolio. Uh, we have three different strategies. Each of them is targeted to 20% vol as we already have done using the strategy level volatility targeting. But then we assign one third of the portfolio weight to each of these individual strategies. The volatility of the portfolio, right? So we're saying that the volatility of the um, alpha one plus 0 0.33 volatility of the alpha two plus 0 0.33 of the third portfolio is lesser than the and so let this be as much as sound it's lesser than let's just see the volatility of the portfolio lesser than um 
these individual volatilities. So, so okay, delete and paste. So which is equals to 0 0.20. So what we're saying is that after we have multiple strategies, just as we lost um, our target volatility in when doing when betting on multiple instruments, when we bet on multiple strategies, the volatility of our portfolio will now be lesser than the target volatility. So even though um, each of the strategy has the correct volatility, if you're betting on multiple strategies, you're going to have um, lower risk. So this means that we will essentially need to adjust our portfolio risk. So we need to scale up each of the individual strategy scalers, right? So anyway, this is the volatility of the previous one. And you can see that it constantly, uh, so the orange one is the one where uh, we saved it to pickle. And that's the one where we didn't apply the strategy scaler. And, you know, it kind of go, goes chops up and down, but it is nowhere near our target volatility. Whereas on the other hand, if you see our blue color graph, that just goes up and down, chops around 20%. So if we hit volatility higher than 20%, then we will scale down our positions, then it will come down, and then we'll just oscillate around this area. This just means that our volatility targeting works. As you said, we want to combine these three different portfolios and in three different strategies, and the combination will make us use volatility. But what we did not mention is that actually we already have implemented the portfolio volatility scaler, right? And if you don't see this, it means that you are underestimating the power of our library. Because for the way that we architectured this um, object-oriented programming and the way that we used this OOP techniques allow us to use the exact same method for strategy level volatility targeting on the portfolio level. And we'll see exactly how to do that. Now, so inside the main file, say we want to do something like um, let's just calm down for a minute. Inside the main portfolio, inside the main Python script, we want to do something like um, get all of the different. Let's just delete all of this for now. You don't need any of this. Okay. But before we go into that, let me just um, save this so that we can use it. Um, so that you can refer to it, right? In case you want to have some reference to this code, just going to put this in a zip file. So let's put that in, we will call this set3. Okay, so let's continue. Um, okay, let's remove this, we don't need this. And we want to obtain data frame for each of these alpha strategies. And we should have these data frames contain enough information, contain all the information about the alphas, right? So we want to do something like um, from utility import multi alpha. Okay, we have not implemented this, but let's say we want to have um, or, you know, import portfolio and right. So Anyway, yes, now we have to implement this portfolio. But before we go into the implementation, um, that will take quite a while. So while we are programming, let's just give us a chance to, uh, let's collect this inside. Let's put this inside a pickle so that later we can just load this in our problem solving in DF1, DF2. And print the F3. Oh, actually, also, let's just get rid of the printing statements inside the util file because it's getting a bit annoying. But anyway, um, let's do that here. And we can just let the simulations take place. Now, like we said, we want to implement the portfolio. So we will take in some arguments that is very similar to the just the original alphas. So okay, we can just take in, we can let it take in the same arguments. Right. Say for example, here we pass in an extra argument that has all of the data frame for the um, sub alpha components. Because this should contain enough information for us to make a decision in our portfolio. 
Yeah. So we're going to do that. And instead of going to utility file, let's you know do that also. So we're going to take class portfolio and then yeah, int self stickers data frames start and data frames. Okay. Now one thing about our portfolio is that if you consider the individual strategies as instruments or as just a collection of instruments, then this portfolio computation here should also have the exact same code, right? I mean, the post computation and the pre computation will be different, but we'll be using a lot of the same um, components. For example, if you treat the portfolio as one big strategy, then you can just use the strategy scaler because this doesn't care whether we're using sub alphas or a collection of strategies. So, a lot of the code, such as the PNL computation and the strategy scaler computation, can just be reused. All we have to do is change the forecast so that it takes into consideration position sizing from different strategies. So actually, we can just let this portfolio be a special instance of the alpha plot. Right? And this is where the power of our um, object-oriented programming comes in. We can also just use this to re-instantiate and let this be um, inside the portfolio alpha plot. Of course, like the other things, we will need to um, implement this functionality inside the portfolio. So let's just take this and see what we can do here. Okay, return. So inside our portfolio class, remember that we are taking in uh, a number of the strategy data frames already. So we actually don't need to compute any alpha signal. All we need to do is combine the different positions. So let's see how to do that. Well, actually, we don't need any pre-computation because we're not computing any signal. Right. Um, let's say for each of the instruments, we can iterate, let's create a data frame to hold uh, the positions, the portfolio weightings for each of these sub-strategies. So we have strategy Fs. I. So strategy I will then try to copy over the strategy data, the IF strategy portfolio weight for that instrument, scaled by the strategy VF's leverage. So this is the um, position size again. So we can go like this. Okay, and then let's let's take a look at what this does. We okay, know our simulations. Have that running, so we can just comment this out. Um, let's load the pickle, and now we can run the main alpha, the portfolio alpha class. So let's see what happens here. Um, let's just take a look at these data frames first. Uh, we want to uh, call portfolio the run simulation. We're going to do this. run simulation, which will go inside the alpha class run simulation, and then it will go into the post compute. So for the first instrument, um, we will see three different columns, right? Oh, okay. Um, the reason why we got all that here is because we are the data frame has this number of indices and then uh, we just assign that and that's just into which data frame has a date time index. So not a problem, I mean we can just do um, df one dot set index and state time if it's true. And then for future reference we can just do that inside the original alpha class, but um, so that we don't have to do it later. But since we're already um, loading it from the disk, we can do it. We can set this. So let's try it again. 
right? So the reason why we got NAND values is because um, these data frames has numbers as the index, while we are trying to align it to a date time index. So we need to set the index to date time first before there are meaningful values. And we can see that um, right away we have positions here. So this is the first strategy, second strategy, and third strategy for the different days. And these are the portfolio weights for that instrument. Now in order to, um, let's take this and then do a forward fill. So if there are any missing data, then um, we'll just the most recently available portfolio allocation. And sometimes uh, the strategy, some, some strategy starts later than another strategy. So see here we have NAND values. So we just fill all of those NAND values with zero. So that's not a problem. Okay, and then let's try to store this inside a dictionary. So self positions, click that, and then self dot positions inst equal to inst weights. Okay, so inside this uh, signal distribution, we want to do um, something like forecast equals to uh, dictionary, and for each instrument, we divide range length of self dot strap Fs. You know. So for each substrat sub alpha, it will just take the portfolio allocation inside the sub alpha that we already collected here. And then we will divide it evenly across the number of sub strategies. Okay, so this is said to be a parity risk allocation. Okay, so we call this a parity risk allocation. Um, okay. Well, in order for this to not throw an error on the first iteration, because well, if you have a dictionary and then you try to access a value like this, this will complain. So um, to, over to overcome that slight annoyance, we can use a default dictionary instead. So here we have default dictionary, and we can assign it to float. Um, and then we can do the same as before. Um, this will be the number of, of portfolio weighting. Right? So this will be in, term, in percentage units of the entire portfolio. So uh, we can just use the same as this. Um, and this will be our multi-alpha risk allocation. So let's see if that works. Okay. Um, we're also going to plot. And I plot that. I plot. And then we plot. Um, let's plot the portfolio's cumulative returns. So in order to do that, we'll take um, lambda returns, we'll take the data frame, and then we'll do something like um, 1 plus the f dot count return. And q plot. And okay, let's plot, let's plot the log return. So it'll be, it'll be the log, and then we'll do this. And we'll do that one thing called numpy. So um, we'll take a log bit of the f1, label first portfolio, um, and we'll do the four different portfolios. See how that shows up in our um, list, and let's see how the let's see how the performance of that turns out. And again, um, we want to show that the portfolio strategy allocation and portfolio volatility adjustment is automatic because we are using this um, alpha module, which already has a implicit strategy scaler. But in this case, um, if we treat the strategy, if we, if we treat the portfolio as um, as one giant strategy composed of other strategies, then we can just use the same um, logic and we won't need to have separate code for that. So again, let's, um, let's try to filter out non-zero returns. So we have to go to a different type of return. Well, should be here. Um, to plot the volatility, we're going to take um, non-zero return as standard deviation to t. Standard deviation of the non-zero returns multiplied by uh, the annualizing constant. 
do is do let's do plus data frame that we want, which is the entire profile. So, okay, let's see how that works, right? So if everything goes well, it means that we have created, we've written the code for our very first multiple alpha strategy portfolio. So multi-strategy quantitative system, right? Um, okay, so just before fail, let's try it again. So inside the Udemy course, we, the focus was on creating a multi-strategy quant system. And this is actually precisely what we have replicated here. Except this time there was a little bit more focus on the object-oriented programming, which is why we had cleaner and nicer code. But, um, there we also looked at volatility targeting. And here um, we also demonstrated volatility targeting on the instrument strategy and the portfolio level. Right. Hopefully um, this demonstration has been useful to understand how to combine different strategies as well as test out your own ideas. Because this is still very simple. Um, one of the problems, or one of the very simplistic assumptions we made is that you're going to have a parity model. But sometimes you're more confident about one strategy compared to the other. And one strategy is a lot better than the other, then you might want to assign more weight to that particular strategy. Okay, anyway, um, you forgot to do the labeling, so uh, these, are our four, these are our four strategies. Um, and the target volatility is 20%. Okay. Um, we should have done the legend, um, but it's okay. Um, we don't. Um, we will move on and drastically advance this code going forward. So one of the things that we want to improve, all right, is that we want to be more flexible with our portfolio allocation. Another thing is that we are actually waiting very long to see the results when we are only testing 20 different tickers. So imagine you're trading a thousand different stocks. You will actually have to wait the whole day. So another thing is, um, as I finished recording these lectures, it occurs to me that there is a slight issue inside the portfolio class um, relationship with the alpha class. Because the portfolio class extends the alpha class, which performs the instrument level of volatility targeting, and the sub-strategies use the instrument level of volatility targeting inside that alpha class, the position sizing inside our sub-alphas already account for volatility, varying volatility of the different instruments. Now, when we use the portfolio class and extend the alpha class, we're going to do the volatility, uh, we're going to do the instrument level of volatility targeting twice. And this double counts um, the volatility effect. Um, between um, the relative sizing of instruments. So this would mean that we would have outsized positions um, rather um, in lower volatility instruments, and we do not want to have this um, unintended effect. Of course, we're going to keep it um, as is for now, because we've already finished recording other lectures, you know, we don't want to go and change the code, but you should take note of that, and I'm sure you can go and work on the problem um, by yourself. Also, you know, we're going to keep this uh, code imperfect for now because we are um, go, we're going to revamp and refactor the code again in the future in the future lectures so you know there's no point trying to make everything so perfect we'll be implementing going forward so, and also um, of course we skip a lot of other assumptions such as cost um, trading friction overnight holding costs and things like that we will uh, address these considerations to come, but I think this is a very good first um, introduction to backtesting, and in particular, multi-strategy quantitative backtesting. Now, of course, we can use these um, simulations to assign portfolio allocations in, in practice, and we're not going to show the automated API execution. If you're interested in that, you can watch the Udemy lectures, because these lectures are going to be very focused on the alpha research side of things. So we're going to see how we can improve and continuously make this a lot more powerful um, in the future lectures. So I'll see you in those classes. Um, we'll also save this as set four. So we can download this um, code and play around with it, if you will. Um, and I'll see you inside the next lecture.